of all the threats that the Star Wars galaxy faced over the millennia, none were as enduring or terrifying as the Dark Lords of the Sith. Just the name Sith was wrapped in layers of fear and mystery associated with empires of death and incredibly powerful megalomaniacs. For thousands of years, the Sith were the greatest enemies of the Republic and the Jedi Order. Their greatest Dark Lords were forces of nature and their armies ravaged many a star system. This video is the start of a new series exploring the full history of these shadowy lords and their wars with the Jedi. And today, we'll be starting at the very beginning, with the tale of how the Dark Lords of the Sith came to be. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The story of the Sith began on Korriban, a remote planet deep in the Outer Rim. The original Sith were a species of red-skinned humanoids, and most of them were Force-sensitive to some degree. They were naturally drawn to the dark side, as they were instinctively violent and aggressive. But despite this innate bloodlust, the Sith steadily became an advanced species. Their tribes developed into kingdoms with complex social structures that fought wars with weaponry enhanced with Force alchemy. The brutality of the Sith was reflected in the societies they built, and so all of these kingdoms adopted rigid caste systems. These castes were so entrenched and long-lasting that the Sith actually diverged into different subspecies along caste lines, a process accelerated by primitive dark side alchemical techniques. The dominant caste was the Kisai, the priest caste whose members were especially strong in the Force and devoted their lives to intellectual pursuits, leadership and the study of the Force. Below them were the Zuguruk, the engineer caste, who were intelligent but not as strong in the Force. They lived relatively privileged lives but not nearly to the degree of the Kisai. Below them were the Masasi, the warriors, who were less intelligent but incredibly strong. Over the millennia, a mix of natural selection and alchemy shaped them into towers of claw and muscle. Lastly, there were the Grotu, the slaves, who were treated with extraordinary cruelty by the higher castes. All of the Sith of Korriban adhered to this caste system and roughly the same cultural patterns. Despite their common cultural background, for most of Korriban's early history, the Sith waged constant wars against each other. This cycle of violence was seen as the natural state of life by the Sith, who valued war as other species would value peace. But around 28,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, Sith society changed forever, and the cycle of war on Korriban came to an end. This was due to the ascension of King Adas, the first overlord of the Sith. From the moment he was born, Adas was believed to be special. His skin was obsidian black, a rarity among the Sith, which the Kisai believed meant that Adas was in some way divine. He grew into a great warrior, tall and burly, with tremendous strength in the Force. Adas became master of Sith magic, as the dark side techniques of the Kisai were known, and he used Sith alchemy to create a set of heavy black armor and a great battle axe. This fearsome weapon became Adas's personal symbol, and he wielded it in a series of wars against the disparate kingdoms of Korriban. One by one, he and his followers conquered all of the nations of the Sith, uniting Korriban under a single state for the first time. King Adas ruled as a god among mortals, revered and respected by the Sith despite the harshness of his reign. The Kisai proclaimed him the Sitharai, the overlord of the Sith. Adas ruled Korriban for 300 years, a period called the Reign of the Axe by the Sith. It was during this period when the Sith made their first contact with the outside galaxy. In 27,700 BBY, Korriban was discovered by the Rakata. They were the dominant species in the galaxy at the time, with their infinite empire unrivaled on the galactic stage. They, like the Sith, were naturally inclined toward the dark side of the Force, which they used to power their technology that far outstripped anything the Sith had at the time. The Rakata traveled the stars via Force-attuned hyperdrives, which homed in on planets with strong Force signatures. Korriban was one such world, and when the Rakata discovered it, they devised a plan to conquer it. 
But before the Rakata began their invasion, they attempted to lull the Sith into a false sense of security. They approached King Adas as well-meaning allies, giving them holocron technology and teaching them about the Force. It was the Rakata that introduced the Sith to the concept of the Dark Side. Though Sith Force techniques had always been Dark Side in nature, they had previously seen their cycles of violence as a sort of harmony, a natural balance that must not be disturbed. The Rakata taught them otherwise, preaching against all notions of harmony and balance, pushing the Sith to embrace the fullest form of the Dark Side, which King Adas and his followers did. But before long, Adas discovered that the true intentions of the Rakata were to conquer Korriban, and he refused to allow this. As the Rakata finally began their invasion, Adas rallied the kingdom of the Sith against them, fighting a long and bloody war that consumed Korriban. In the end, against all odds, the Sith won. They became the first species to ever defeat the Rakata in open war, and their victory was the beginning of the end for the Infinite Empire, which ultimately collapsed 2,000 years later. But this victory came at great cost. Korriban was rendered desolate by the war, its surface transformed into a lifeless wasteland of red sand, and even as he led his people to victory against the invaders, King Adas was killed in the fighting. The Kingdom of the Sith held together just long enough for the Sith to develop a small interstellar empire. Using co-opted Rakatan hyperdrive technology, most of the Sith fled now desolate Korriban for the ice planet Xyost. Other Sith settled on Jaguada, Thul, and Malachor V, while a sect of Sith heretics who rejected the Dark Side were banished to Tund, the most remote outpost of the Sith. Not long after these settlements were established, however, the Kingdom of the Sith fragmented as many among the Kisai tried to take Aras's place. Once again, Sith civilization descended into a constant state of war, which it remained in for nearly 20,000 years. This time, however, these constant wars weren't just part of a political cycle. They were the result of petty kings scrambling over each other in a pursuit of ultimate power over the Sith. Something almost all of them sought, but almost none of them achieved. This meant that, as the Galactic Republic rose to replace the Rakata in the galaxy beyond, and galactic civilization as we know it formed, the Sith were irrelevant to galactic affairs, too busy fighting each other to be important on a larger stage. Over the course of this period, Aras became mythologized, and his title, Sitharai, came to refer to a prophesized perfect being free of restriction, one who would rule over the Sith, destroy them, and remake them into something greater. Some among the Kisai interpreted this prophecy to mean that Adas himself would return, while others saw the Sitharai as a metaphorical heir of Adas. But for millennia, there was no sign that any such being was coming soon. Some Sith kings, like Dath Kagraush, came close to conquering all of the Sith splinter states, but no Sith actually managed to reunite the Kingdom of the Sith until around 7000 BBY, when Hakagram Grausch conquered all his rivals. But the younger Grausch's reign wouldn't last, for it was during his time that new outsiders would come to Korriban. While Sith were busy killing each other, the Galactic Republic grew and thrived under the watchful eye of the Jedi. The Jedi, as you surely know, rejected the use of the Dark Side, preaching that only through the light side of the Force could balance and peace be achieved. But that didn't stop some members of the Order from dabbling in the Dark Side anyway. Early in the Republic's history, in 24,500 BBY, a group called the Legion of Leto broke from the Order to study the Dark Side, sparking the First Great Schism. The Legions were crushed by the Jedi in a brief but decisive war, but thousands of years later, in 7,000 BBY, another group followed their example. These Dark Jedi also split from the Order, and at first, the Jedi Council, which was based on Ossus at the time, decided to just leave them alone. But it soon became apparent that this wasn't an option. The Dark Jedi, the Council learned, were using the Dark Side to warp life itself, raising armies of terrifying monsters that they planned to lead against the Republic. With this in mind, the Jedi Council determined that the schismatics had to be stopped. And so, the Jedi went to war, beginning the Second Great Schism in earnest. The resultant war was known as the Hundred Year Darkness, and as you might guess from the name, it lasted for a full century. Jedi Knights and their Republic allies made war against the Dark Jedi, 
who fought back with soul-eating leviathans and hordes of zombie soldiers. It was a bloody conflict, but in the end, the light side triumphed over the dark. The Hundred Year Darkness ended with the Battle of Korbos in 6900 BBY, in which the armies of the Dark Side were crushed and all but 12 Jedi were slain. The Republic wanted these 12 executed, but the Jedi refused to do so, believing that no one deserves execution. Thus, the Dark Jedi were loaded onto a galleon and shot into unknown space, with the Jedi Council hoping that they would find repentance on some remote backwater world. Instead, these exiles found Korriban. The 12 survivors from the Battle of Korbos included some of the Dark Jedi's best and brightest. There were Zozen, Marchioness of the Black Legions, and Baron Draper, the Admiral of the Dark Jedi's war fleet. There was Sorceress Brudica, the warrior Karnes Mur, and Sorza Sin, the most powerful of the Dark Jedi life warpers, the self-proclaimed grower of living weapons and biological plagues. Most importantly, among the survivors was the leader of the Dark Jedi, High General Ajunta Pal, a man who killed more than a dozen Jedi back on Corbus. They called on the Dark Side to guide their crumbling galleon to a new home, and it brought them to Korriban, a world that, in Sorza Sin's words, screams the loudest for those who hear the Dark Side's call. When the exiles landed on Korriban, they were confronted by a group of local Sith who the Dark Jedi subdued with displays of force power and proto saber skill. These Gen Jedi, as the Sith called them, immediately won the respect of the Sith on Korriban. But as they attempted to learn more about the civilization they had discovered, they met resistance from Hakogram Grouch, the reigning king of the Sith. Grouch was suspicious of the outsiders, and though he tolerated their presence, he attempted to prevent them from infiltrating Sith culture, fearing that the exiles would steal the secrets of the Sith. But Grouch failed to imagine the extent of the new arrival's ambitions. After becoming acquainted with the dark side civilization they had found themselves in, the Gen Jedi were determined to conquer it for their own. With the help of Grouch's Shadow Hand, or Second in Command, they managed to infiltrate the Sith capital on Zyost, learn the beliefs and traditions of the Kisai, and undermine the existing monarchy in just a few short weeks. Once they deemed their understanding of the Sith sufficient, the exiles proclaimed themselves gods and openly challenged Hakogram Grouch. Ajunta Pal fought the Sith King in single combat and beheaded him with his own sword, after which he claimed Grouch's throne for his own. Victorious, the exiles declared themselves the lords of the Sith. Ajunta Pal, who the Kisai proclaimed the living manifestation of the Sith god Typhogem, claimed the title of Jenarai, or Dark Lord of the Sith, with Sorza Sin becoming his shadow hand. From Zyost, they quickly brought all of the Sith civilization under their rule. These new Sith Lords fused Sith magic and alchemy with Dark Jedi techniques, giving rise to an order of Darksiders that would later threaten the whole galaxy. This order became the ruling elite of a new Sith Empire, which would spread to over a hundred worlds. But that's a story for another time, namely the next episode of this series in which we'll look at the rise of the Sith Empire. But what do you think? Are you excited for this series? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.